and what a wonderful morning it is again. I thank God for the opportunity. I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly bless God and it's an opportunity again for me to be in your presence this morning that shows so much progress and so much promise for God's well-being in your life. And I just really, really want to thank God for you. I really want to thank God for you that tune in consi consistently and constantly to command your morning. We really thank God for, for your faith. We want to thank God for your, 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 your purpose, your sense of purpose, your sense of daring. We want to thank God for it all. And God, Lord, we just want to pray for your people this day. We want to pray for your people this morning that, that even as they tune in, even as they connect, that the anointing that is available for them in this early day, they will not lose in the name of Jesus. They will not miss. And every single thing that is are uh, carded for you, carded for your people this morning. God, Lord, I declare that they will receive it, that they will receive it by your grace. They will receive it by, your, by their obedience to your word. They will receive it in the name of Jesus by right stepping in connection with you. God, Lord, we want to praise you and glorify you. We want to declare in the name of Jesus that everything concerning us is well. Everything concerning your people is well in Jesus' mighty name. My brethren, this morning, you know, it's still, I want us to remember and to feel, I don't want us to lose the feeling of freshness and newness that, that, that holds, that, that is held within the promise of this new year. I don't want us to miss the, the, the blessings that is with us in the name of Jesus or the blessings that God and the promises that God would have made for us in this year. I really don't want us to miss it, men and women of God. And as a result of that, I want to stay a little bit on course. I want us to stay a little bit in the not so much in the reflective mood, although it's going to be a combination of reflecting where we are in a purpose for truth for going forward. And one of the things that the Lord dealt with me with, and so many of us, and I'm sure I'm connected with somebody, is that sense that you feel at the end of the year, and maybe how you feel right now at the end of the week, that spirit of non-achievement, that spirit of of of. of feeling that you did not achieve that which you should have achieved in the name of Jesus. Sometimes I tell you the truth that when we pray before God, sometimes we go before him with that sense that I did not hold up my part. I did not do what I was supposed to do. If, if I had only done what I was supposed to do, then my life would have been better off. My family would have been better off. My health would have been better off. My finances would have been better off. But there is this sense that I am just so frustrated. I am just so, um, you know, feeling a sense of, 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 of demotivation. And I just want to speak to my brother. I want to speak to my sister. I want to speak to my mama and my papa out there. I want to speak to, 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 to the people that are young and youthful that listen to me. Your sense of unachievement and that feeling of loss, that feeling of lack is not God's perfect will for you. It is not. I want you to recognize that that sense of guilt, that sense of frustration is not God's perfect will for you. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite verses, and I say it every Friday morning when I'm here, I say it, and it's a reason because I so believe it, that the thoughts that my God has towards me and towards you are for good and not for evil, to give you a hope and an expected end. Hallelujah. So as a result of that, I know that my God himself is having good thoughts towards me. The Bible says that my name is inscribed upon the palm of his hand. The Bible reminds me and the Bible reminds you also that just as the mountains are about Jerusalem, so is Almighty God around his people that there are protections. I choose to believe that. And I trust in the name of Jesus, my brothers and sisters, that you believe it too. 
that you flow in that knowledge, you flow in that awareness that Jehovah God is for you. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have a system of, you know, you feel like here's what, your, the efforts you put into something and, you, and, and just connect. Remember that if I'm saying anything that you feel uh, connects with you spiritually, I don't mind if you, if you call the radio station and, and, or the television station, sorry, and, 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 and solicit the prayers. Of the men and women of God that will be listening and, and answering on the phone. But sometimes you feel a sense that you are doing stuff, you are working hard, but there is a sense of frustration because the effort that you put in, you're not seeing the results. Sometimes you feel like you are working hard and you're trying, you're trying maybe to, to win the affection of someone or you're trying to, to win the recognition of your boss or you're trying to, to just make ends meet with a project or some private business and no matter how hard you try, you don't seem to be getting ahead. There's a pro, there's a, there's a, there's an embargo on your progress. Whatever you do to try to, to, to go forward, there seems to be some law operating that is preventing you from going forward. There seems to be some kind of um, celestial, some kind of systemic environmental block to your going ahead. You know sometimes you need a little bit of sun to just get this done and the rain seems to come and just throw everything away. Or sometimes you need a little bit of rain and then all of a sudden this, everything just seems to be working contrary to your desire for success. You, it, it, it's like it's like if you're a fisherman I, I i just want to give you the example it's just like you you're a fisherman my brothers and sisters out there and you are in the boat and you hear and you in the, you in the, you 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 out there in the ocean and you have other fishermen and every time you hear a catch or you hear one of them catch something, you hear a big uproar and a celebration but for you you, you your line is in the water but you're not catching anything I tell you in the name of Jesus that that spirit that wants to create a lack in your life, that spirit that wants to create a frustration in your life, it dies this morning in the name of Jesus. That spirit gets bounded up right now in the name of Jesus. That spirit of starting well, where yes, things looking good, you're starting well, but at the end of it, it's there's frustration, there's, there's hurt, there's pain, as if the Bible says, you know, like if the Bible doesn't say for you that the Lord who make it rich will add no sorrow to it. It seems that if you're going ahead a little bit, then there's a compendium of sorrow. The point I'm trying to make men and women of God is that there is a operation, a spiritual, negative spiritual, spiritual operation in place solely to frustrate you out of that which Almighty God has for you. And that's why we're going to pray the way we pray this morning. We're going to pray with a certain amount of vengeance. We're going to pray with a certain amount of, 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 of authority. We're going to pray with a certain amount of anger. Ah, men and women of God, listen to me. I want you to know that I heard very recently in a, in a, in a service, and, and it, it impacted me so much, that the Bible talks about the caterpillar and the canker worm. But the Bible also says in that same context that there are Four, and this is how the devil is. This is how the devil is. The Bible says, we, I'll get back to the concept of that woman, but let me tell you, the Bible says that the devil shall not come but to steal, kill, and destroy. In other words, if the devil is in your presence, hallelujah, if the devil is around you, men and women of God, the devil is around you with a purpose, to ensure that it kills you, kills your dream, kills your family, kills what it can that has life of God. Then he wants to destroy, in other words, utterly destroy you and erase you, right? <coughs> 
and to steal your joy, steal that which is of you. The point I'm trying to make, men and women of God, is that in the Old Testament, when the Bible talks about the canker worm and the caterpillar, it also spoke, some, spoke about other parasites. And the thing is, is that there are different types of parasites. There's the, there's the, there's the locust. And the Bible talks about the locust. And the thing is, is that if the locust comes and the locust eats what it goes and takes away, and then another parasite comes, the, the, the grasshopper comes and it does what it has to do and goes away, and then comes the canker worm and the caterpillar, and it eats. So at the end of the passage of all those parasites, you're left with nothing. That is the devil's plan for you, my brother. That's the devil's plan for you, my sister. And that is why we cannot afford to remember or we cannot afford to forget that we are in a state and an art of war. That the devil, when he comes around, is not coming to us for jokes. Is not coming to us for, 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 for pleasure. It's not coming to us to keep our company. The devil intends to make you look like God doesn't know how to take care of you. Sometimes you operate and sometimes you start to wonder and say, Why, what is God doing? Because you see, the purpose is, is that when you stop doubting God's ability to take care of you, then you start looking for other options. You start trying to say, well, listen to me, I can't do worse. So let me try to ensure, let me use my own muscle, let me use my own skill, my own intellect to try to solve my problems. The truth of the matter, men and women of God, is that we are going to pray this morning. And we are going to pray a particular way. Because the way I want us to pray this morning, the connections I want us to make with Almighty God, is for one that recognizes that we exist by the grace of God. And as a result of that, we will continue to flow with that. We will take authority over every waster in our life. We will take authority over the spirit of every waster in our life. The spirit that brings life lack the spirit that brings frustration and when i say lack i'm not talking only about financial lack i'm talking about the lack of good health the lack of good relationship the lack of feeling love the lack of promotion the lack anything that prevents you my brother and sister from existing at the optimal potential in your life is called lack it is a serious disease it is a serious serious condition spiritual condition it is the actual spiritual condition that causes each and every one of us to have a concern upon the face of this earth, the spirit of lack. So men and women of God, I know you're listening to us in Tobago, I know you're listening to us on the World Wide Web, I know you're listening to us in the beautiful land of Guyana. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus that lack is not a portion. Tell that spirit of lack that you have been around too long. According to positive, receive your eviction papers and get away from my life. God, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the provision, for deliverance from, all, from deliverance from all kind of bondage. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have provided a deliverance from us from all kinds of bondage. The bondage of lack, the bondage of delay, the bondage of frustration. We come against every single one in the name of Jesus. I break myself loose. From every inherited curse, every curse, everything that looks like a curse, everything that looks like a frustration, everything that looks like death, everything that looks like failure, I break myself loose from it in the name of Jesus. I, and you can call your name, I, and call your name, the I am free, I am loose, I am free, I am delivered from every bond of frustration and failure every bond of, 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 of demonic oppression I have become free every covenant every system that my forefathers may have gone into every arrangement every 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 cultish move every cultish covenant that would have been made that that forces my family in the name of Jesus and so far and, and also myself to be locked into a relationship that does not prove vital to me not prove beneficial to me and my life in the name of Jesus I I divorce myself from that covenant in the name of Jesus 
I separate myself from that covenant in the name of Jesus. That covenant in the name of Jesus is not my portion in the name of Jesus. That is not the covenant I want. I want a brand new covenant with you, Jehovah God. I want a covenant of life. I want a covenant in the name of Jesus, of life, of added life, abundant life in the name of Jesus. I want a covenant, oh Heavenly Father, of success. I want a covenant of good health. I want a covenant of promotion. I want a covenant in the name of Jesus of good family relationship. Jehovah God, I declare right now that I say that that is what I will be working for. That is my desire before you in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus that the blood, the blood, the actual blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary, that blood, yes, yes, yes. If you do not remember, if you sometimes forgot, because sometimes we can forget that Jesus Christ actually lived and actually died and actually shed blood. And there is a power in that blood. There's a power in the shedding of that blood and we use that power we said just as that blood was shed we declare that every system of 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 of, of deposits of negative deposits of satanic deposits in our life in the name of jesus be washed off be eradicated be eradicated by the pressure watcher of the holy spirit in the name of jesus sometimes i don't know if any of you all used a pressure washer before but let me tell you this with a pressure washer when you turn it on and the place looks muddy and slimy and green and sometimes you can't even walk on it people will slip on that floor it's no good for use the push the, the, the simple water used with that pressure washer will just remove every single single filth that is upon the floor and it's the same thing we want to use we want the the the, the, the power of almighty god to scour away every filth that stays upon us in the name of jesus every enemy of our progress we declare right now frustration in the name of jesus every enemy of our progress every enemy of the progress of the people of god we declare right now in the name of Jesus your frustration. We declare in the name of Jesus your, 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 your deletion from our systems or deletions from our families. You are no longer welcome. We declare eviction notice for you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We declare in the name of Jesus that those people, those people out there, that choose to stand and become our enemies. Those people that want to become, to work with the enemy to ensure that we, of, we suffer and we all our loved ones suffer lack. In the name of Jesus, we declare frustration to them. We declare in the name of Jesus that the light of the Almighty God, the light of the Holy Spirit shall illuminate my path so I can see each and every one of them as they stand before you, as they stand before me. In the name of Jesus, God, Lord, we declare that our eyes shall see clearly that which you desire for us to see considering our journey forward in 2018 in the name of Jesus. We declare right now that in the name of Jesus, that which you have planned for us by your grace, by your... The Bible says something, men and women of God, and it just hit me in my spirit as we are talking this morning. And this, and men and women, I want you to understand. The Bible says, "Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds." The Bible says that grace, the grace of God, the grace to overcome. Sometimes, some of us feel that because of uh, something we'd have done, something that we would have caused us to, to be in a position where we are now, and I'm telling you that it is very likely that sin or certainly deviating from God's will for your life would have maybe caused many of us to be in a position that it is not good to be. But the Bible says 
that where that happens, now the Bible says where sin abounds. Now, to abound means to grow forward, to grow big, to grow strong. You know, where sin grows strong, where sin becomes more prominent, where sin becomes more of a dominion force, where sin becomes a strong man in your life, the Bible says that the grace of God much more abounds. In other words, wherever it is that the sin looks like it wants to become a big thing in your life, where the effects of sin want to become a big thing in your life. The Bible says that the grace of Almighty God is even stronger, is even greater, is a bigger thing. Is that something to not hallow- say hallelujah for? In other words, there is no excuse that even if you would have suffered because of something you'd have done in your past, the Bible says that the grace of God much more abounds, much more has the opposition to be able to engulf your well-being than even the sin that you would have done. Men and women of God, what I'm saying to you right now is that in light of that, in light of that revelation, go forth in prayer with the knowledge that you have a grace that is available that abounds even more than the sin that you would have committed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we declare in the name of Jesus. That where people would have laughed at you in 2017 and called you a fool and called you certain things in 2017, I declare that in 2018, these people would be honoring you and respecting you in the mighty name of Jesus. That God is going to enlarge your coast. That God is going to lift you up because you stood steadfast in him in the mighty name of Jesus. Men and women of God out there, and those that may even be looking by happenstance, it is fundamental for us to continue to realize that Jehovah God is seeking after our best interest always. Amen, amen, amen. We declare in the name of Jesus that there are powers out there that are interested in your downfall. And we declare we can call those demonic sponsors. They are the ones that want to finance your downfall. And when I say make things happen in such a way, create systems, make people more angry, make people more so that, that, that even if they had to make a decision concerning your life, concerning your breakthrough, concerning something, they are less likely to do it because the systems of this world are sponsored by people who want to have people more negative, more angry. And as a result of that, they are angry and they are negative, they are going to make angry and negative decisions. I declare that those decisions shall not affect you or affect I in the mighty name of Jesus. They affect me, sorry, in the mighty name of Jesus. Excuse the English. I declare right now in the mighty name of Jesus that the grace of God will go forward in the name of Jesus. And make a path before us in 2018 that is smooth. In the name of Jesus, I speak for your people and advancement in their lives that they will only know that it is not by their effort that they did it, but it could only be by you, Jehovah God. I declare that in my life and in your life, men and women of God, that our path to the top, we will not embrace the worldview that it must be rough and hard and arduous and, and, and impossible and stressful and it causes loss and family decay and all that. No, we declare that the divine way to the top is carded for us, it is smoothed to us through the will and the glory of Almighty God. That is the commitment. That is what we declare is our lifestyle. That is what we declare is our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that those people standing around you that want to pull you down in the name of Jesus, by virtue of the fact that they stick around men and women of God out there, your enemies are necessary. Yes, I said they are necessary. 
Ah, let me tell you why they are necessary. Because it's only when your enemies are there that you can fulfill the prophecy of God over your life that tells you that you shall eat a feast in the presence of them. So as a result of that, I just want to declare right now that that feast that is yours, that feast, that benefit that is yours, that benefit that is mine, in 2018 we shall receive. We have established that God wants good things for us. Help us, O Heavenly Father, to be able to bottle down. Help us to be able to see, O Heavenly Father, originally what is it that we desire from you and pursue it. In the name of Jesus, when the devil wants to put up a block, according to our system, of mine. When the devil wants to put up a block, you press against it in prayer and you push and you keep pushing until you get through, until you survive and you succeed in Jesus' name. I am not here to tell you that you that 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 I want you to 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 operate lacklustily. No, as a matter of fact, I want you to be like a diligent soldier. I want you to, to, to focus on God's will and on God's plan for your life. The truth is, is that anybody that tells you God's plan for your life must only be the one to confirm it. Because God should have already been able to tell you personally. And that's the thing. That's why I'm not advocating that you run from prophet to prophet, prophetess to prophetess. You don't run to people to tell you what God wants. God would tell you, seek his face and solve it yourself. And God is going to send two and three people to confirm his word. Men and women of God, let us propose this year in prayer, prayerfully. To be able to embrace that which God has for us. Yes, the steers will be tossed and turning, but I declare in the name of Jesus that the one who can calm the storm is on your boat. The one who can calm your storm is on your boat. And let us wake ourselves up in him and hear him declaring things. I just want to say thank you so much for joining us this morning and command your morning. I declare that the peace of God that passeth all understanding, O oh, Heavenly Father, would garrison your heart in the name of Jesus. Protect you dearly in the name of Jesus. That according to the word you shall be anxious for nothing. God, Lord, I declare that you, our Heavenly Father, as you get up this morning, will be feeling empowered for mighty success in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. At this time, we also just want to let you guys know that in 2018, on March the 10th, Conscious Meets Christ is on. Yes, I will tell you a whole lot more about it. You would see the ads coming soon. But don't miss this opportunity to be a part of one of the greatest evangelism tools that God has brought our way. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you all. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.